if you or me die before we get to Poontang, I think I'm gonna have blue balls for the rest of my life. Get down the... Alright, get on Arno. Get with it. Get on it. Get on it. Get with it. Anyway, so we track down Mirabo's killer, and we are about to confront this man who said... who the apothecary said had a hood. Hmm, that's interesting. He could be an assassin. Or literally could be anyone else with a hood, so... <laughs> I don't understand how that's a clue. I mean, it could be anyone. I mean, if it's a Templar... A Templar wearing a hood, that's like the fucking... That's like... You don't do that. It's like rules that you gotta follow. Oh, shit. Long enough, piss pot. <sighs> Balak. It's Pierre. Find me. What is he doing here? Only question is... I'm not sure how to, how to go about this, because you fucking... Poisoned is... He poisoned us! Ooh. Peace with the Templars is a fairy tale. And this is what I like so much, is that... Uh, the Ezio saga and the Connor the first time saga the game. Fuck it, I don't care. The Templars all had the jealousy. They were the full blown, like, to the Templar order, the even power. though it destroyed everything around them. Yeah. There was never a point where yes, yes. an assassin was completely zealous or zealous. How do you say that? And this is the first instance of that where, uh, where oh, dude, he mentioned the other games. Cool. Anyway, and that's what I like about this game is that for the first time it shows that anyone on side, if you take things to an extreme, things are gonna get bad. And that's what I like about Pierre Bellic. He's such an interesting character because he's an assassin and he pr he does have he probably does have a damn good reason for being this uh, stubborn, this uh, cautious about being with Templars, being affiliated with Templars. Um, he probably has a really damn good reason for it, and the and why I think that is because we just spent half the game with him, um, and we realize that he's a proper assassin. He's not like this evil guy. He just has a he just has a belief that he wants to follow through to the end, and that's what I like the most is that it's very important. That if you feature a character who is corrupt, you need to show that they are still human first. Otherwise, the corruption will not come along, will not come across in the best of ways. It will not work in terms of story-related things. Dude, I got knocked to the ground. Oh shit. Anyway, after all that, dude, this fucking dramatic music. Dude, I'm not sure if I should tell jokes during this. This is pretty. This is pretty, dude. It's pretty hard. It's pretty. uh... Oh, dude, I caught him. Dude, this is like our first fight. I gotta go and kill him. Kill him. All right, <laughs> I just walked through him. Dude, button tapping. Hear that shit? Oh, more of that. Oh, this is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. All right, maybe not. Time out. Time to break out the super tap. Oh shit! Wow, oh, dude, can you just break through the window? That? Oh no, that was a door. That'll hurt, dude. Ow. Hey, what's up? <laughs> this is a pretty wicked fight. It's also ow. It's also kind of cool because this actually feels like an actual boss fight. And Assassin's Creed is not boss fighty kind of game. It's more of observe your target, take out the target in one hit. So this kind of boss fight is kind of cool. I like it. Boop. I can think for myself. I think one of my favorite lines is coming up. Uh, that shows Unity's. Uh, uh, moral lesson and how how the whole thing is going on. So I'm I'm just gonna stay quiet for a little bit for it. I've seen Templars put entire villages to the sword just for the chance of killing one assassin. Tell me, in your vast experience, what have you seen? I've seen the Grand Master of the Templar Order take in a frightened orphan and raise him as his own son. That is what I like. I love that moment. Because... Because Bellic has a very good point. Arno has not been a, been an assassin for very long. He's only been at it for a couple years. Um, and he hasn't seen betrayal, uh, death of a loved one, or... Well, he has seen death of a loved one, but still, he's... He's never faced the full amount of tragedy that other assassins like Ezio Connor. Uh, Edward, all those characters. He hasn't seen that much, so I actually didn't expect Arno to say anything. Because, 
With other media, that's kind of how it is. It usually blends to one and never shifts back to the other. Whereas, oh, it's like this, and always like this, and the main character doesn't really have an answer uh, for that, for their enemy, which works in a case, but it, it, it does uh, dr uh, drivel down eventually. Uh, whereas it's like, oh, at the very end, he's going to have his answer with everything else. Um, so I did not expect Arno to answer, but it's but Arno's answer is something I didn't expect, and it was fucking perfect. Because even though, because even though, again, Arno doesn't have fast experience, but he has experienced a Templar, the Grand Master Templar, took in the orphan of his uh, of his greatest rival, took in the orphan of one of his greatest rivals, and raised him as a son, with no intention of using him as a weapon. I mean, Elise had already known about using him as a Templar, but, uh, with, uh, with, uh, I think Pierre de la Serre? I think Pierre, those, I think, uh, de la Serre and, uh, Bellic share the same name. I'm not sure. No, Francois? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, he took in, uh, oh, shit. He took in the son of, of, uh, <coughs> of someone who, who, Who's, uh, let me repeat that. He took in the son of which the father belonged to an order of which has vowed the death of, uh, of these orders. And that's what I really like about this game. That's what I like about the story. That's what I like about everything. And that's kind of, it's actually the same reason. I think it's actually a good thing I brought up, uh, uh, Rogue, uh, before this. I didn't, I, I forgot that, uh, that this event happened this early, but, uh, with Rogue, it's very, very different, whereas it starts with betrayal and everything else. I'm just walking right through this motherfucker. I'm supposed to have a nice moment. Dude, let's let him talk. Arno's not even looking at him. Boop. And Pierre's dead. And the next scene is also very important to uh, Pierre's, char uh, Pierre's character. So we see Charles Dorian uh, fighting Thank off... Uh, do I even know his dad's name? Probably because I played Rogue, but... Probably shouldn't have said that, but... <laughs> Oops. Dude, he called him Pisspot too. I'm just in awe. It's great story writing. So wonderful. I love it. Anyone else got their dick out? Just me? Okay, fine. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry about the snifflings, but, you know, that's just how it goes. Sniffles. No, Pierre, don't do it. Mirabeau's a nice guy. He's got a powdered wig. Shit's legit. I think that's his actual hair, though. No. To be honest, that's kind of Mirabeau's fault. After they had a complication, he would expect... It. I'm not going to drink that. <laughs> Sorry. And while me explaining all of this could have an effect, um, I still like how this is brought... I still like how this is handled, how, this, how the angles of this are really good. That's a phone ringing. Completely ignore it. You probably can't hear it anyway, but I can hear it. I don't like phones ringing. Anyway, shut up, phone. I'm trying to have a nice moment. We're talking about betrayal, zealousy, and talking back to your enemies. Believing in what's right, and believing what you know. Oh, is this the part where I think it is? I do believe it's the part where I think it is. Bloody hellfire. That's not nice. Dude, hellfire is enough. You don't need to have the blood in here. I mean, it's just gruesome at this point. Dude, I'm running slow motion. The bridge is open. Bridge. Good. Oh, yep. It's the thing I think it is. Guys, remember when we went to uh, 19th century Paris? Well, we're going to a different time of Paris because it's time for another time rift. See all the times I use in there? I think it's time for a new time joke. <laughs> Uh, uh, can't breathe. Do I gotta go here? That's not.
dude. Okay. Okay, that's enough. See you on the other side. Oh. Just give me a second. Give me a second, Bishop. I just gotta get up the stairs. Okay. Up there. Okay. Huh. Alright. Oh, I gotta go up oh, this thing. Okay. Up we go. Up. Arno, come on. <laughs> or player. It's not Arno anymore. It's the player. Whatever. Wherever the player's name is. I'm gonna call him Frank. Is that alright? Frank? For France? Or Francois? How about... Franciaid? I don't know. <laughs> Mystery solved. But yeah! So Mirabeau died, and Pierre is a dick, but he has a reason to be. Because he has very... he has a lot of years of experience, so Pierre being that way is a very good reason for his being, but it doesn't excuse him perfectly, and that's why Arno's response to him is so perfect. Oh, manhole cover, all right. Moving around there, so we're not in 19th century Paris. So what century are we in? For those of you who have already seen this, you already know what I'm talking about. It is 1944, World War II occupied Paris. And this is a fun time rift. Because we get to climb something very big. And we get to shoot at things. Okay, as before, we can't linger. Unfinished memories are way too dangerous. You need to find a way out. I know. Shut up. I'll dude, this guy's gonna be second. pissed. Oh, dude, it's not there. Alright. Oh, yeah, now I remember. The guy's like, oh, you can't see because it's a simulation. Oh. Got the Eiffel Tower. Now we're climbing the Eiffel Tower. What time was the construction of the Eiffel Tower? I'm giving you guys a lot of homework for me to for you to figure out and tell me later, but still. What was uh when was the Eiffel Tower constructed? I was just wondering. I gotta avoid the spotlight, so <laughs> because um they're uh they're blimps and those blimps have guns and uh yeah, guns Arno's not used to the machine gun yet, so <laughs> He's expecting one bullet reload, one bullet reload. Machine gun's not really like that. Oh, here we go. Dude, how did that guy find me? Germans have really good eyes. I mean... <laughs> it's gonna go into a Nazi joke, but... Fucking the blue eyes... You know what I'm talking about, right? I would've told the joke, but my historical, uh... My historical hit... My historical facts are a little rusty when it comes to, uh... Stuff like World War II, so... I'm more, I'm more, uh, I'm more well rehearsed in Renaissance than later. I should start researching more, uh, later decades, because later decades are interesting, and uh, I don't think, uh, Inglorious Bastards is a good representation. <laughs> oh shit! All right, avoid the electricity. Arnold's like, what? What is that? I see, is that blue lightning coming out of the side? That's very strange. What if I touch it? Do I get energy from it? And the electrocutes falls off. Dies. It's not nice. What if Arno really was conscious during this and he came back, he's going to Elise and he's like, Oh no, there you are. We need to find, uh, we need to find Jaman. And he's like, Alright, Elise, <laughs> I need you to calm down. I just went to the future. The future? What do you mean? They have guns that shoot continuously. And I got to shoot one. I felt like God. I know, I think you need to see the doctor. That's another thing. They have hospitals that work. I gotta take cover. All right. <laughs> if Arno just started quoting movie lines that have that literally have not come out at his time, probably because movies weren't around at his time, so. But just quoting movies in general. It'd be even weirder if he quoted movies after 1944. <laughs> That'd be a little weird. Dude, I can see buildings from here. Like, one's right there. Oh, is that it? Oh, okay. Gotta go in the next one. Which is this way. Dude, going with the camera pans. Reminds me of the 
Assassin, Assassin Tombs and AC2, those are probably my favorite stuff. I really like the, the Assassin Tombs. And that's actually what I like Rogue about, is that it had a lot more verticality and creativity when it came to its island uh, design than even 4. It had better island design because in 4, the island design was pretty much either a patch of sand, an edge with a cliff, or just a place with an inn on it. That's pretty much what the islands were like. But with Rogue, they're a lot more expansive and a lot more... They uh, reward you for exploring the place. And they don't just give you the uh, the uh, collectibles that you're looking for. You have to actively search throughout the island. And that's what I like about it because you get to see the whole island. And that's what I liked about Rogue. There's still a few problems with Rogue. So... As in it has more bugs than Unity. Which is why I didn't get why everyone bitched about Unity, but Rogue was perfectly fucking fine. <laughs> Dude, that's pretty cool. God, that really would be weird if Arno was just conscious while this was going on. But yeah, this is actually a really cool time rift. I like. I do like this time rift idea. I'm not sure if they're gonna re-implement it for uh, uh, victory though. Victory is an interesting beast because it got leaked. Every started, everyone started bitching, and they were like, "Hey, we didn't mean for it to leak, so we're gonna keep quiet about it until we, uh, we, until we were gonna initially reveal it." And that's what I like, and they've kept to the word. We haven't seen a th single thing about victory. And that's what I like. Focus on unity a little bit more. You know, focus on the the cool things about unity a little bit more than than you can worry about victory. That's what I like. That's a lot of bullets. You think that the bullets would eventually break through that uh, that barrier because it ain't. I don't think that thing's too strong. I got an Oh, it blew the fuck up. Arno, if he is conscious, all well, this Arno's is like, holy shit! I just made something explode from that far away. That was awesome. And you see, just a corpse falling down. It's still awesome. Come on, come on, you know, oh, that was cool, didn't even get a second shot in, that's pretty sweet, but yeah, this is fucking cool, right, am I supposed to go up here, yeah, I'm supposed to go this way, oh, yes I am, I was right, up here, dude, it's raining, it's raining, raining, but it's still bootyful, I like the rain in this game, it's still bootyful, the wet metal and everything, Gotta go up to the top. Oh, there's the portal. Didn't even see that. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, that's what you're talking about. Keep going. We can reopen it. Okay. Okay, this is gonna be a hell of a jump. Whee! Oh, it's still unstable. It just warps away right before you hit it. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I like that. I especially like the rift missions. I didn't think I would like the rift missions because it's just playing through... Uh, uh, rifts that you already play just with extra objectives, but the rifts are actually pretty fun uh, Especially that you get to kill people um, But yeah, the rifts are actually re a really cool addition. I'm not sure if they're gonna bring it back for a victory I couldn't see it being brought back in victory. I mean, I guess I kind of could but uh But yeah The rifts are cool. I like them Especially the World War two one. I wouldn't see how they Actually you could do a lot. It's set in a uh, uh, Victorian era, uh, London. London has tons of history. More history than America. Well, that's kind of the point of America. It only has a couple centuries of history. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're still there. We still have some good history. We have some great history. We we punched the British in the face. We said no tea, and then we got independence. Then we wrote the Articles of Confederation, and that fell down the toilet. So then we wrote the uh, Constitution. It says, we the people of the United States of America. That's all I remember. <laughs> Then there's a bunch of signatures at the bottom. John Hancock's signature is on one of them. Either the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution. Maybe on both. I don't know. The funny thing is that uh, that big painting with all the uh, Founding Fathers signing the Water. Declaration of Independence. Thanks, Deacon. That didn't happen. <laughs> The, the the founding fathers kind of came in to the uh, to the con to the hall they signed it and then they left because they were doing a treasonous act and if they were caught they would die so they kind of just ran in signed it, and ran off of course John Hancock had to be a dick and just be like oh look at me look at my signature it's so wonderful that's actually something else I like about this game you could just you could just 
dude, just you just sit here. Hey, what's up, bro? Give me some coffee. Do we get some coffee? You watch that guy do stand up. Is it ventriloquist? That'd be weird. Jeff Dunham, are you here? <laughs> dude, do some peanut jokes. Do the taste taste of China bit. It's pretty racist, but I don't care. I don't care about racism. I jump through the window, get some money. Hey, accountant. Oh, dude, the man's talking to an accountant. What, is, what are they talking about? Sir, I cannot deal with this, with the master who just jumps through the window all the time. I can't, I cannot keep up with it. Oh, man. But yeah. Oh, dude, guys, you want an easy trophy? A super easy trophy? Just watch this. This is your trophy guide 2015. You walk up to this, you walk up to here. You don't touch anything. You enjoy the view. Just keep looking. Just keep looking. Just keep looking. Ah, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's a hidden trophy too. And down we go. Down we go. Alrighty. So guys, I believe that will that will be the end of this uh, session of Assassin's Creed Unity. Please tune in next time while we talk to at least some more. And we talked about how Mirbo's fucking dead. Pierre killed him. We talked about you know storylines and plots and everything and stuff like that. So guys, that is the end of that. So please tune in next time. While we kill the redhead guy. Not Elise. Because, first of all, she's not a guy. I can affirm that she's not a guy. I looked at that butt. It's very firm. <laughs> Stick my blade in between those butts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, no. I'm dead. Can I still stick the blade in between your butt?